Before this video starts, on the 26th of this month, I'm hosting an AI game dev conference for game developers who want to learn about all the latest AI stuff. There's a free pass available. Just go to gamedevguild.com or down in the description, click it and grab it and I'll see you there. All right, let's get going. Hey, today we're going to do something a little bit different. This article popped up and I started reading it and then thought, why don't we read this together? Because I think everybody watching is probably going to have some big thoughts on this. It says, gaming addictions ruined lives as players lost jobs, ignored school to spend up to 16 hours a day with video games. <laughs> Only 16 hours, huh? All right, let's see what Ricky has to say. It says, Logan Visser arrived at Brigham Young University's Rexburg, Idaho campus as a healthy, happy, competitive wrestler planning to study business. But within months, a pastime spiraled into an all-out addiction. Video games sent his life off the rails. The then 18-year-old told the Post he would play League of Legends through the night, glued to the screen until sunrise. Sounds like what I did when it came out. And then he'd sleep through the late afternoon, go donate plasma to make a few bucks, spend it on pizza, Mountain Dew, sit down to game, and then repeat the process all over again. So I guess he didn't uh, then get up and go to work. He actually did that whole sleeping thing. When you're that deep into it, you just have a bunch of shame, and it's like the only place to turn is back into the thing that's creating all your problems, Visser told the Post. So... I could see that. If you've got a video game addiction and you, you feel bad about it, you're probably just going to keep playing video games because you're addicted to them. So that within six months, Logan had gained weight, lost friends, and flunked multiple classes. That's crazy. So I wonder if he quit the, uh, the wrestling, too, because you're going to go up weight classes and maybe just stopped wrestling, too. All for, I mean, League of Legends is fun and all, but you've got to do other stuff. And says, gaming just took over my life. I was completely... Or I was completely wasting my life, the 29-year-old said. I wanted to keep getting better at this thing. It, it, that doesn't even matter. That that I can see. Wanting to get way better at a game and, and getting super competitive in there. And I mean, coming from wrestling, I could see it being a, a pretty competitive uh, mindset there. Logan says, video game addiction ruined his life and caused himself to play. Ah, that's just a picture there. It says, I see... Why the older generations look down on people that are addicted to gaming, but they never faced anything like this where it's literally designed to keep you engaged and keep you coming back. That is so, so well, actually, that's not really true. They have faced some things like this. That's uh, casinos, right? Like casinos are kind of the one of the starts of those. They got people super in there. They want to get them addicted. They want to get them to go in there and kind of do the same thing, spend all of their money and Maybe casinos don't care about all of their time. Maybe really, games don't either. A lot of them just care about all of their money. I guess some of them care about time, too. But yeah, casinos. I mean, what do you guys think? Casinos and video games, uh, they definitely have the same kind of addictive sides to them, or at least the, um, the some video games, I would say, have the, have the mindset of staying as addictive as casinos, or even more so. And it says, although Logan's addiction may sound extreme, he's not alone. Uh, that's definitely the case. I, I know a lot of video game addicts. The World Health Organization declared gaming disorder an addictive behavior in 2019 based on a review of 160 studies and a consensus of experts. It makes sense. Like, like I said, it's a lot of stuff is designed to be addictive to get people to keep coming back and playing. It says the disorder is characterized by an impaired control over gaming, sidelining of other interests. I think that's probably the, well, I was to say the most important part, but I guess the most important part is the next one. And a significant detriment to personal, family, social, educational, and or occupational functioning. So I guess the lack of functioning is probably worse than the lack of other interests, but you've definitely got to get out there and mix it up. Let's Let's keep going. This is about what I expected so far. There's a sus substantial body of research demonstrating that for a subset of gamers, their gaming becomes compulsive. Addiction expert and University of Georgia professor Dr. Amanda, I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name, told The Post. Gaming becomes their primary means of emotion regulation. What? They get their emotional regulation from gaming? Is that like they... They, they only get their happiness from it. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't understand what that part means. If anybody knows, drop a comment. I'm kind of curious to know what, what that's supposed to mean. If you guys can explain it, I don't know. It says, these are the hallmarks of an addiction. 
The WHO estimates the order impacts 3 to 4% of gamers and 8.5%, so about almost 10% of young gamers. I'm surprised it's that low. I would expect it to be even higher. It says research studies, or research suggests gaming addiction operates much like any other addiction by triggering a dopamine rush in the brain, which I think they've, they've tied that all up. This is, it says research. Let's, let's click. What's the research here? Internet and video game addiction diagnosis, epidemiology, and neurobiology. So it says, in the past two decades, substantial increase in the availability of digital technologies, including the internet, computer games, smartphones, and social media. Behavioral addiction to use of technologies has spawned a body of research. Their recent inclusion of internet gaming disorder as a condition is uh, for further study in the DSM-V invigorated a new wave of researchers, thereby expanding our understanding of these conditions. The article, or this article, reviews current research theory and and practice regarding the diagnosis, epidemiology, neurobiology, and I I, I hate reading abstracts of things. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's uh, something about that. But they're talking about not just gaming. I feel like the smartphone stuff, um, a lot of the Instagram, TikTok, and all those other things are probably even more addictive than the video games but maybe i'm wrong maybe it's just that video games have still some limitation on where they can be played so you don't see it as much out in public but i don't know okay let's go on according to nih multiplayer role-playing games are the most social and addictive variety can change brain circuitry and chemical can change your brain circuitry and metabolism. So I wonder how much uh, EverQuest and stuff changed my brain circuitry. I played a ton and was probably very addicted. And it says, Dr. Tanvir Ahmed, an Australian psychiatrist who mainly treats adolescents, told the Post he sees cases of gaming addiction every week and describes the phenomenon as a behavioral addiction comparable to gambling. That's kind of what I would expect it feels very like gambling for some games, especially um, when people are just can't stop playing. They, they seem kind of a lot like a gambling addict. And I don't know if you guys have ever known gambling addicts, but they get pretty bad. Go out and blow their entire rent or mortgage on uh, you know the day they get paid, just out there gambling, hoping to win big because they can't resist the urge. I have never understood that. I always, when I go to a, a casino or anything, I just give myself like a, a nice $10 limit. Got $10 and... If I win, cool. If I lose, cool. It's just not that fun. Maybe video games were um, too tuned for me. So now that those kinds of uh, you know, non-video games, slot machines and all that kind of stuff just don't excite me nearly as much because you know, I just play a video game for a lot less and have a lot more challenge and fun out of it. Anyway, oh, so I think game is, so even though this whole thing is about gaming addiction ruining a life, um, which we still haven't really gotten all the way into the details yet, um, I still prefer it over gambling. Although gaming addiction is generally a quiet crisis, it spilled out into the real world in a dramatic manner recently when 21-year-old gamer and Twitch live streamer Kai, I, I don't know how to say the guy's last name, I'm sorry, I don't watch any Twitch stuff, um, attracted a crowd of thousands in Manhattan's Union Square for a giveaway of PS5 consoles, keyboards, and mouse pads. I did hear about that, though. It sounded uh, kind of crazy and fun, like the kind of thing that... I would probably want to um, see in person just to see what it's like. The gathering quickly devolved into an all-out riot. Well, I guess maybe I would turn around and leave then with fist fights, fireworks, and vandalized cop cars. Yeah, I think I would probably pull up and then turn around and head back out. So in the event, in the end, seven people were injured, 66 arrested, including 30 juveniles. The chaos was a real-world peek into the opaque oh, ah, world of online gaming culture. I disagree i think that this was probably more just a side effect of getting a bunch of young guys out there excited to get some free stuff and there's just way too many young dudes all excited in one place that tends to have bad bad effects no matter what the cost is <laughs> especially if they're all going there expecting to get something and most of them aren't getting something Gaming addiction is not just people playing video games. There's also a parasocial relationship that people have with online streamers. 
Cam Adair, founder of Game Quitters, the world's largest support for vi- group for video game addiction, told The Post. What? Game Quitters. What's this? Is gaming taking over your life? Take a short quiz and find out. We're going to do this later. Yeah. Um, that'll be fun. <laughs> Let's go back. I mean, fun and uh, scary at the same time. The level of intensity and excitement of hype to get some sort of equipment that's related to a streamer that they love is a testament to the influence of streamers or the influence of streamers have on this generation. He added, "Adair's online support forums have attracted thousands of gamers and their parents from 95 countries." He says his website gets 150,000 hits a month, and although the public display of violence in Union Square was unlike anything Adair has seen before. He said many families privately struggle with video game-induced outbursts. Yeah, I mean, I I know a lot of people who definitely have. Uh, I I work with clients who, when they turn the computer off, their kid is threatening to commit suicide or refusing to go to school. What? Well, that's not really an option. Uh, For some families, unplugging means a violent reaction from their son, and it's literally a safety concern. If that's the case, then you've got to just take the thing. You should have taken it away a long, long time ago. And we had a situation just a couple days ago traveling, and for the traveling, the baby had access to an iPad a little bit. She normally has no access to one, so she had access to it for some of the times, like in the plane and stuff. And that almost instantly was becoming a problem. So second we got home, it's gone, and it won't be back for many, many, many years. It's definitely not good for behavior. Um, video games, on the other hand, I feel like they're... It, I haven't run into this problem, definitely nowhere near the like safety concerns or, or crazy reactions, maybe just um, laziness and not wanting to do things, but nothing like this, so... Uh, I guess hopefully I'm lucky. I wonder if anybody else has. If you have, you know, maybe maybe you don't have to comment. <laughs> but yeah, if you have seen stuff like that, I, I feel sorry for you. All right. So it says Adair founded Game Quitters in 2013 after he publicly shared his own story of addiction and was flooded with messages from fellow gamers. Gaming was really just a place I felt like I belonged. Adair said Adair, who began. Gaming heavily at 13 to cope with bullying. If my parents tried to do anything about it, I would run away or disappear for a couple of days and just terrorize them, try to scare them. How do you get scared of your 13-year-old? I mean, maybe if they're, like, huge and you're tiny and... I Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel bad for him. Okay, by 17, he was gaming upwards of 16 hours a day. Yeah, that sounds kind of familiar. The situation... Uh, to me maybe not 16 hours but um on weekends for sure the situation got so dire that he dropped out of high school when his parents forced him to get a job cam deceived him. how do you how do you drop out of high school and play game? like you just tell the kid no you take their computer away and you make them go to school uh after the fa- his father dropped him off at, at a restaurant to work as a prep cook he would take the bus back home and sneak in his bedroom window play games and said i wonder if that was like a common thing or if this is like this happened one time he was like oh yeah i got fired and because if that was a regular occurrence and this dude's got some more problems than just video game addiction got some uh uh, yeah (laughs) i was winning games and feeling like my character was progressing in life like i was leveling up but then the problem was when i turned off the game and looked at my room it was a mess looked at my life it was a mess so i just turned the game back on and keep playing and that's definitely something important i mean it's if you're watching and you're looking around and it's messy um after the end of the video once we've gotten all the way to the end and you hit thumbs up go go clean it up it ha- being in a nice clean area is super like important for productivity and just getting stuff done and feeling better and it's an easy thing to do just you know, spend 15 minutes just you know grab your little your little cube flip it over to 15 and start counting clean for 15 minutes and do that a couple times a day and keep it nice and organized it'll help and minimize some of that downside or some of that negativity uh, obviously it's not not a cure all but yeah. so i would just go back to and keep playing okay but by 19 when he was playing up to 16 hours a day he reached a breaking point 
It got to a point where I actually wrote a suicide note, and that's when I realized I needed to make a change. That night, I asked my dad to help me find a counselor, and that's when I realized I had to stop gaming. Going cold turkey plunged him into an all-out withdrawal, complete with sleeping difficulties, anxiety, panic attacks, but it ultimately pulled him out of his addiction. And I think that's probably the best way to stop, too. Just, just cut it all off completely for a little while. It just... I mean, take a, a week or a month. Pick a pick a time period that you know sounds totally easy to do, and cut it out for that amount of time. And you're going to see, uh, in a, within a week, you're going to probably start to see some differences and start to feel quite a bit better. At least, at least I would think. Um, again, I'm not a counselor, so I'm not going to give too much advice here. Just uh, try not to be too addicted to games. Adair, now 35, recently moved to Thailand where he runs Game Quitters full-time, counseling families struggling with gaming addiction. And he says demand only increased, especially post-pandemic. Data from the American Time Use Survey conducted by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics found game usage for men aged 15 to 24 nearly doubled in 20, from 2019 to 2022. Well, because everybody was stuck at home. Um, but it's only 1.82 hours a day. I mean, I say only, but it's lower than I would have expected. Uh, that means that the average young man is spending an additional 45 minutes a day uh, playing video games over pre-pandemic levels, which is probably because a lot of them are doing were doing school from home and doing remote things. So just the average is going to go way up because they're spending less time sitting around doing other stuff in the classroom. Same survey found declines in time spent working, sleeping, exercising, and socializing. Okay, fine. It, maybe it isn't even split. Who knows? It doesn't actually say the percent. So, And meanwhile, according to the Office of New York State Comptroller, unemployment rates are returning to pre-pandemic levels for all demographics except for young men. Is that because they're addicted to games? It says males aged 16 to 24 are still struggling with a 20, almost 24% unemployment rate as compared to almost 12%. So that's almost, yeah, it's like double. I mean, that's, it's literally double, 11.8 and 23.6. So the unemployment rate is doubled and females are at 13%. Interesting. Is that just because the males are playing more video games i hope not as addiction and unemployment among young men soar online support groups sometimes aren't enough for compulsive gamers so-called digital detox programs have sprung up across the country to help those who can't help themselves well i wonder how that works they just like disappear for a little while go off to a boot camp Maybe it's a, a coding boot camp or something. I don't know about you, but the number one thing that killed my gaming addiction was uh, gaining a coding addiction. Now, whenever I start gaming, I just kind of get this instinct to want to start doing game code instead. So maybe, maybe that's the, uh, the best solution. All right, well, let, let's see what they actually do, though. So it says the Summerland Program for Technology Habit Change in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, hosts video game addicts ranging from ages 7 to 21 for two to seven week sessions in nature free of technology. Okay, so yeah, it's kind of is a, a camp. The camp was founded by psychologist Michael Bishop, who says demand has been steadily increasing year out year over year. We're definitely seeing young people that fit the classification of addicted, Dr. Bishop told the post. We're seeing just kind of a lack of motivation in life. The spark for life is just not there. It seems like they're okay with just being plugged in online and getting their needs met digitally. I wonder if this is just, again, boys and games, or if it's a uh, all young people with technology, or if it's even a new thing, really. So this is one of the 18-year-old, or one 18-year-old camper has been at Summerland since June. Uh, and this is June, July, August, I guess two months. Uh, the Atlanta native's parents sent him there after throwing out computers and setting time limits, failed to curtail his six to eight hour daily habit. If there's no computers, how do you get on there? You just take away all the tech. Huh? Maybe they got some other way to get their own tech. I guess 18, but I don't know. I'd be playing, and I'd look out the window, and it'd be afternoon. Then it seemed like an hour would go by, and it'd be pitch black. Yep. <laughs> I'd sit down and start playing games after dinner. or wouldn't stop till the sun was rising. Okay. Yeah, that uh, oh, sounds familiar. He said relinquishing his video game and cell phone at Camp Summerland was an ex 
anxiety inducing at first even just sitting down to eat was a little uncomfortable without a phone uh, that shouldn't be uncomfortable you should be able to just that, that's something you should probably if you don't do it already if you don't have anything super important popping up on your phone sitting down to eat just toss it off to the side go put it on the charger and you know in, enjoy that and try, try to talk a, a little bit at least you know if you can <laughs> But as the camper who asked the post to withhold his name for privacy reasons gears up to start his first year studying business at community college, he's glad he's kicking his old habits and beginning to feel comfortable without his devices. Yeah, I think it's important. If you're going to college and, and learning stuff, you've got to balance that stuff out. You can still play games, but if you're addicted and you're not doing your schoolwork stuff, you're not doing, going to actual work and all that, then you've got a real problem, especially well, up at the top. Where, what would you say it was... Uh, donating blood to buy Mountain Dew and pizza instead of uh, going to work. He said, I want to go to college. I don't want to have bad grades and just be playing video games all the time. He said, I'm open to the idea of changing my habits. Dr. Bishop said, kids like the camp and parents desperately trying to support... Oh, oh, said kids like the camper and the parents desperately trying to support them are fighting to resist the pull of a powerful industry. There, there are psychologists and behavioral researchers and statisticians that are trying to make games more habit-forming so they monopolize your time as much as possible, he said. The marketing and development budgets of these games run into the, the tens of millions, even hundreds of millions of dollars. And that is definitely the case. I mean, I'm sure the numbers just keep going up, but I've seen plenty that were in the, the many, many, many tens of millions Um just personally so yeah there's a lot of money that goes into it and a lot of uh, research on how to get people i mean they don't i think when they're doing the research they're not doing it as how to get people addicted they're doing it as how to get people to spend the most money that's that's their goal the downside of that is though they spend the most money by becoming addicted um which is kind of problematic and not all games of course some games don't do that. Some games, they just build an awesome, great game. It's fun, and, and that's that's that. And some games, the addiction is probably just kind of a side effect. But a lot of the time, there's um, there's a lot of science going into that or behavioral stuff. So Bishop added, 50 years from now, it's going to be kind of like looking back at cigarette advertising from the 30s and 40s, and we're going to think, what the hell were we thinking? I wonder. I think you might be a little optimistic there. What do you guys think? Although the video games, or all the video games, plunged Logan into the darkest moments of his life, he turned a corner eight months ago when his wife Sierra was nearing her due date with their first child. And that's another thing that'll probably, for a lot of people, um, push that addiction off to the side a little bit. Getting a new baby, um, it'll kind of change your perspective and stuff, and, and make you think a little bit more about what you're doing and how you're spending your time, especially when you watch them grow, get bigger and bigger and bigger. Remember that like they're only going to do each thing once, and if you missed it to go you know, win or lose in some League of Legends match, like, it's probably not worth it. And you can always go win and lose in League of Legends match later. Uh, so it says, when he went cold turkey and pulled the plug on gaming entirely for his now eight-month-old son, Mick. Well, ho hopefully he's able to uh, keep the addiction at bay. He said... Or he plans to set a good example for Mick by abstaining from video games, but won't ban them outright. Yeah, I think abstaining is probably a little overboard, but you got to be able to, to deal with it. Play some games, but limit yourself. You know, just like you would with a kid. Give yourself some set amount of time, um, and then you know, do it in your spare time. If you got extra time and you're deciding between video games or TV or you know, video games or some other you know hobby that you have, then sure, video games are fine. But if you're deciding between video games and going to work or video games and sleep or video games and uh, going to school, then you, you shouldn't even be making that decision. Do the important stuff, and then the game time should be your spare time. It should be the thing that you do for enjoyment, just like you would any other hobby. And if you saw somebody else doing it crazy, um, you'd call them out, hopefully, too. So, yeah, just... Uh, Try, try not to be addicted. All right, let me know what you guys think. If you guys hate this kind of video, please uh, let me know too. I just wanted to read this and have a little bit of fun with it. So hopefully you guys had fun with it too and uh, aren't too addicted to video games. All right.